So D-Wave has just announced its Qubits 2026 Quantum Computing User Conference, and they have speakers like Anduril, AT&T, and more. And what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna look at the connection specifically to D-Wave and Defense, Department of Defense, and some different things that have been happening and starting to piece together that there might be a pattern here. So we're gonna look at some recent press releases, partnerships, and see if D-Wave is trying to crack into a lucrative and repeating customer being the DOD and military customers. Before we get started, make sure you give a like or subscribe, it really helps the channel. All right, so let's first look at the announcement. So D-Wave has announced their Qubits 2026 Quantum Computing User Conference. And this is gonna be taking place next month in January in Boca Raton, Florida. And I will personally be going there. This will be my second D-Wave conference. And I'm really looking forward to it. I really enjoyed the last one. It was one of the best conferences I've ever been to. And I've been to a lot of conferences. So. At this conference, D-Wave has just announced in this press release that they're going to have notable speakers, including representatives from Anduril, AT&T, Davidson Technologies, Lighthouse. Now, what's very interesting is I was actually there last year and I was at the table with some of the Anduril guys. And I asked, hey, why are you guys looking at D-Wave and what is interesting? And I also talked to Davidson as well. So we have some different military connections that are starting to emerge. And that's not all. So Qubits 2026 will also feature a keynote from Jeffrey Baxter, a longtime defense consultant to the US government who will share his unique perspective on the intersection of music, technology, and national security innovation. Very interesting. So on this announcement, D-Wave actually had a very strong day. It was the strongest quantum stock. It closed at $28.44, up 5% on the day. And what was really interesting is the rest of the market actually was pretty red. It wasn't a, a great day for the market, but D-Wave definitely had some optimism. So quantum computing company D-Wave has installed one of its quantum annealers alongside Davidson Technologies for federal customers to access. So D-Wave has made its quantum annealing computer available through a major defense contractor offering expanded access to its quantum machines for federal defense customers. Announced on Friday, the partnership with Davidson Technologies has made one of D-Wave's Advantage 2 annealers operational and available for government customers working on mission critical tasks in the DOD. And this was from November 3rd. 2025, so just about a month ago. And this is from Dale Moore, the CEO of Davidson. Davidson and D-Wave are partnering to provide the Advantage 2 system to customers is an important step forward in our pursuit of cutting edge national security solutions. The goal is for this advanced technology to equip national security agencies with unmatched capabilities to anticipate threats, secure critical systems, and maintain global technological dominance in an era of accelerating complexity. And then Senator Tommy Tuberville says, military readiness means ensuring that we are using the latest and greatest technologies to help our military meet mission objectives. With the launch of D-Wave's quantum computing system today at Davidson Technologies, Alabama is leading the effort to develop quantum powered applications that can transform how we solve national security challenges. So we're starting to see definitely a push from D-Wave into this sector. And we also saw just about a week ago, D-Wave announced the formation of the U.S. government business unit. D-Wave announced today that it has formed a new business unit dedicated to driving the adoption of its quantum computing products and services with the U.S. government. Led by seasoned government and public sector business executive Jack Sears, the newly formed unit will support D-Wave's enterprise-wide U.S. government-related initiatives. And then Sears says, D-Wave is uniquely positioned to address many of the challenges facing our government. With D-Wave's quantum technology capable of solving real world problems today in a quantum computing system operational in Alabama that is expected to eventually handle sensitive applications, now is the time to aggressively push quantum adoption in service of national security and defense. So one new speaker also at this D-Wave Qubits 2026 conference is AT&T. And we saw that 
Entity Docomo, a cell phone provider, I believe in Japan, has been using D-Wave systems to optimize cell traffic. So let's take a look at this. So with the advancing quantum technologies, commercial use of quantum computing to solve some of our industry's hardest problems is becoming realistic. Technologies such as quantum annealing can offer massive commercial value already. In our session, we will describe how we explored some of the more challenging operational network problems with quantum annealing as proof of concept for AT&T. With the massive number of technical dispatches necessary in the field annually, AT&T's fleet operation is a challenging optimization problem. Using D-Wave's hybrid solver, we compare the results from the optimization against existing classical performance. Our preliminary results show orders of magnitude improvement with the quantum approach. We also highlight another use case as a subset of AT&T network outage management where we formulate the problem in Cubo as a graph partitioning optimization problem. So there you have it. Now we have AT&T, which is a huge cell phone provider in the United States, having a preliminary result showing orders of magnitude improvement with the quantum approach. So real world use cases, real potential customers here in AT&T. So the combination of Anduril and AT&T being at this conference really help lend credence to what is happening here in D-Wave and annealing. And in the conversation of annealing, I actually wanted to bring up a tweet that a Twitter user posted and Dr. Baratz, the CEO of D-Wave, actually responded to. And this was very unusual because Alan doesn't really respond to comments on Twitter. So Gene basically says here, I've recently sold my qubits position and deployed the proceeds towards IonQ and Tesla. Given the rapid progress of the gate model, the fault tolerant era has been pulled forward by multiple years, so I no longer believe D-Wave has enough runway to grow its revenue to size that justifies its market cap. So Gene is a pretty big Twitter user, or I should say X user, and he posts a lot about quantum stocks. He's a big investor. And actually, Alan came and responded here, and Alan had mentioned this before, in a previously televised interview. But he says here, gate model systems are making encouraging progress and the work towards fault tolerance is important for the field. At the same time, large scale optimization remains a demanding application area where annealing quantum computing delivers value today. And this is expected to always outperform gate model. Annealing and gate model are different types of quantum computing approaches that will solve different types of problems. According to peer-reviewed research, gate model quantum computers will not offer advantages for all problems, problem types. And then he links the journal. Overhead associated with quantum error correction will mean that gate model quantum computing will not be competitive for many computational workflows, including optimization, even as they scale. Annealing quantum computing is very good at solving optimization problems, which cannot be efficiently solved by gate model. Gate model quantum computers, once commercialized, are expected to be very good at quantum chemistry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you get the point. And basically, this was a very un unusual interaction for a CEO to step in and leave a response here. But I'm glad he did because he actually linked to the full peer-reviewed article here that discusses annealing and its unique strengths and potential weaknesses. But one of the big findings in this paper is that annealing will maybe always be better at optimization. And I've previously mentioned on this channel that it's my operating opinion that the supercomputer high performance computing center of the future will feature multiple modalities. We're very much stuck in this idea that we can only have a CPU or a GPU and no other compute modality is valid or will ever be useful. And we're just simply not thinking big enough. It's very possible that the supercomputer center of the future will have a quantum annealer and will have gate-based quantum machines. And even within quantum computing, we have multiple different modalities and those modalities like photonics or superconducting qubits or trapped ion, they might be better at different things. We're still exploring, learning and understanding what the strengths and weaknesses of each modality within quantum computing are. So very fascinating to see 
So there's clearly a big push from D-Wave to get the military customer. And what's so important about the military customer, the DOD is they write checks and they write checks every year and you can depend on them. And it's something that an analyst can put in a revenue model and forecast. We just talked to the inflection CEO, Matt Kinsella, over 50% of their revenue is currently DOD and military. So, so if D-Wave can get some of that DOD and military pie and show their value to the military, that is a fascinating use case for annealing. So to round off this video, we're gonna take a look, and, and this is recorded on December 8th, 2025, and we're looking at a the stock price for D-Wave for the last year, okay? so. At the start of 2025, this was the stock could be purchased for $3.50. And as of the time of this recording, the stock closed at about $28 for a 650% gain. This is the crazy thing about this story with D-Wave is I think it's still getting started. They haven't even released their 100,000 qubit annealer that they teased at the last qubits 2025. They haven't even yet released their gate-based computer. And we haven't seen some of these bigger names, like what is Anduril gonna say? What is AT&T gonna say? Because there's a whole panel. I'm excited to go to this conference. I'm excited to learn more about what D-Wave is saying, but more importantly, what D-Wave's customers are saying about the advantages of annealing. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What's your favorite quantum computing modality right now. I know that I am personally excited about a lot of the different ones and annealing looks like it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So leave a comment and we'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you really enjoyed that content. If you would like to support this YouTube channel, I have three different membership levels starting at $4.99 a month. They include Quantum Bull, Gold Bull and Diamond Bull, head over and click the plus button. You can learn more about these memberships and find out which one is right for you.